So I have with me this ball, okay? If I throw this ball up in the air, what really happens? I basically give this ball a push. And by giving it a push, I give it kinetic energy. And with sufficient kinetic energy, the ball starts moving upwards. It starts going upwards against the gravitational pull of the Earth itself. But as it keeps moving upwards, it loses kinetic energy, its velocity decreases, and it reaches a particular point where its kinetic energy is zero, its velocity is zero, its potential energy is maximum, and then it starts falling back again. Quite simple, right? The ball goes up because of kinetic energy, and then it comes back again because of the pull of the Earth. Now, what if I replace this ball with something else? What if I replace this ball with a light photon? So here I have, let's suppose, a torch. Okay, if I switch on the torch, the torch is basically emitting light photons, a large number of photons which are traveling upwards. Yes, it is traveling upwards against the gravitational pull of the Earth itself. So can I expect a similar behavior with the light photon itself, that it goes up, decreases its velocity, comes back down? Well, there are a few things. First of all, the reason that this ball is affected by the gravitational pull of the Earth is because it has mass. Light photons, on the other hand, do not have a rest mass, but it has energy. And we know from Einstein's mass energy equivalence principle, E equals mc square, that anything that has mass will have an energy associated with it, and anything that has an energy will have a mass associated with it. So if the light photons has an energy, they also have an equivalent mass associated with it. And that mass can be affected by the gravitational field of a heavenly object. So if these light photons, which has mass, are affected by gravity, then will they slow down as they move up, just like the ball? Well, again, that is forbidden by relativity. Special relativity tells us that light travels at the velocity of light, no matter from what kind of an inertial frame you're looking at it. It is a constant of nature. So the light photons will not lose velocity, but they will lose energy, not as a decrease of velocity, but rather as a change in its frequency. So let's do a few calculations and you'll understand what I'm talking about. Now before that, I want to specify that I am not discussing general theory of relativity. The right way of talking about how a light photon behaves in gravity would be to have a detailed discussion on GTR or general theory of relativity. So to avoid any kind of a misconception, I want to specify that that is not what I'm doing here. What I'm trying to do is I'm trying to look about how the energy of a light photon changes as it travels through a gravitational potential. So to do that, let's first look at a simple case of a ball itself. So if you have a ball here, which has, let's suppose, some kind of a mass, and I give it a push, I give it some kind of a kinetic energy, all right? So the kinetic energy of the ball is, let's suppose, half mv square, all right? And I also specify that this height is a reference for me, okay? This height for me is a reference where I define the potential at this particular height, I define it as zero. All right. So the ball moves upward, it reaches a particular height h, where the new kinetic energy the ball has, ke dash, is equal to zero, and the new potential energy in the gravitational field is going to be mg capital h. So if I apply energy conservation principle for the case of the ball, so energy conservation principle tells us that the kinetic energy at this particular height, ke plus pe, is the same as the total amount of energy at this particular height, which is Ke dash plus Pe dash. So this I can write as, so this is nothing but half mv square plus zero, half mv square plus zero is equal to mgh plus zero, which is mgh, and I end up getting V is equal to 2gh square root. So this is a very simplistic sort of a calculation. It basically gives us a relationship between the amount of height traveled by the ball and the amount of velocity. So if I give it a velocity v, it will travel a distance of height h. The reverse is also true. If I drop the ball here, then it will travel a distance h and then it will gain a velocity of v here. Now let's look at the same case, but for the case of a photon. So if there's a torch which is emitting a particular photon, then this photon will have some kind of energy. Yes or no? 
what is the energy of a photon the energy of a photon is basically given by h nu yes so the energy of a photon let's suppose here is equal to h nu now again i am deciding that this is my reference so let's suppose the potential here and the potential energy is nothing but zero based upon my own reference now as i just now mentioned as this photon starts traveling upwards against the gravitational pull of earth it is affected by gravity because it has mass due to its motion so how can i show that the energy of a photon is given by h nu when u is the frequency and h is a Planck's constant but anything that has energy also has mass which is given by einstein's mass energy equivalence principle e equals to mc squared yes so there is a mass associated with an energy e so if i replace that here i end up getting mc squared is equal to h nu or i can say m is equal to h nu upon c squared so the mass associated with a light photon of energy h nu is equal to h nu upon c squared so this is the mass of a light photon because of its energy and this mass will be affected as the light photon is traveling upwards so basically what is going to happen is the potential energy at a particular height h for this particular mass pe dash is going to be m g h yes so this mass is traveling upwards and after it has traveled a particular height h it is going to gain in potential energy pe dash mg h so it is going to lose in energy that it originally had let's suppose now it has an energy of e dash is equal to h nu dash so if i apply conservation of energy principle here then i can say that the total amount of energy at this location is equal to the total amount of energy at this location so e plus the potential energy is equal to e dash plus the potential energy dash so what is e here e is nothing but h nu plus potential energy here i have defined this as my reference to be zero and what is this this is nothing but h nu dash all right new energy of the photon and what is the potential energy that the photon has gained m g h where m is this particular expression so if i substitute this m here then i end up getting h nu is equal to h nu dash plus m is nothing but h nu upon c square so g h small h nu upon c square if i take this term to the left hand side and i reverse the sides then i end up getting h nu dash is equal to h nu minus g capital h small h nu upon c square if i take if i cancel out h then i end up getting nu dash is equal to nu 1 minus g capital h upon c square so this is the new frequency of the light photon after it has traveled a distance of h in the gravitational field where the acceleration due to gravity is g i hope you're understanding what i'm trying to do here the photon has a mass because of its energy and this mass is affected by gravity in the same way that a ball is affected by gravity so as the photon is moving upwards against the gravitational pull of earth it loses energy which is reflected not as a decrease in velocity but as a decrease in its frequency now in this calculation i have assumed acceleration due to gravity to be a constant because i am taking very small distances if i want to sort of extend this argument and imagine a case in which the photon escapes the gravitational potential of a heavenly object so a photon escapes the gravitational potential of a planet or a star then what is going to be the final frequency of a photon when it completely escapes the gravitational potential of let's suppose a star so let's do that calculation also so here i have a star all right so the star has a mass of m and radius of r and there's a light photon which is emitted at the surface of the star and this light photon travels away from the star and completely escapes the gravitational potential of the star then what is going to be the change in the frequency of that light photon can we calculate that we can do that it's quite simple actually so let's suppose that when the light photon is actually emitted at the surface of the star the light photon has an energy e and a frequency of new let's suppose what is going to be the potential energy at this particular surface the potential energy of 
this any kind of an object having mass m at this particular point is nothing but minus g m small m upon r all right so m is the capital m is the mass of the star g is a gravitational constant capital r is a distance between the center and that small mass m and that small mass m is at the surface capital r where the small mass is nothing but the mass of the photon or the effective mass of the photon because of its energy now if the photon completely escapes the gravitational pull of that particular star at infinite distance all right so let's suppose at infinite distance the photon has an energy e, a, e dash is equal to h nu dash and its potential is basically zero. So I define that at infinite distance, it escapes the gravitational potential. So the potential is zero, but at the surface, the potential is this much. So now again, I can apply the conservation of energy principle, which says that the total energy E plus PE at the surface is nothing but E dash plus PE dash and infinite distance, which says, that E is what? H nu, okay? PE is minus G capital M M by R. Why? Minus sign. The minus sign is because it is an attractive potential. All right. So here I can write capital G capital M small m upon capital R is equal to E dash, which is H nu dash. So finally, we have H nu dash is equal to H nu minus G capital M small m upon R, where small m is the mass of the photon because of its energy which we obtained as h nu upon c square remember e is equal to mc square e is equal to h nu so the mass of the photon is h nu upon c square if i replace this here then i end up getting h nu dash is equal to h nu minus gm small h nu upon c square capital r the planck's constant gets cancelled and I am left with nu dash is equal to nu 1 minus g capital M upon c square r. So this is the change in the frequency or rather this is a new frequency as the light photon completely escapes the gravitational pull of the star itself. I can do a little bit more calculation here. I can find out the fractional change in the frequency. So the fractional change would be nu minus nu dash upon nu itself, which is nothing but del nu upon nu. So this is going to be one minus nu dash upon nu. So the fractional change del nu upon nu is equal to one minus nu dash upon nu, which is one minus nu dash upon nu is nothing but one minus one plus capital G m upon c square r one one gets cancelled and the fractional change in the frequency of the light photon comes out to be g capital m by c square r so this is the fractional change in the frequency of the light photon as it escapes the gravitational potential of the star completely so this kind of a phenomena when light photon as it travels away from the star experiences a change in its frequency is known as gravitational redshift why redshift because if you're looking at the visible light then the frequency of that visible light as the light comes out of the star's gravitational field will decrease and a change and a decrease in the frequency means that the light is going to shift towards the red end of the spectrum so as the frequency decreases the visible light will shift towards the red end of the spectrum so that's why it's known as a red shift and it is known as gravitational red shift because it is different from doppler red shift where the red shift in doppler effect happens due to motion between the source of the observer source and the observer but in this case it is because of the photon spending energy to escape the gravitational potential of a particular star that its frequency decreases and we see a particular shift in the frequency of the spectrum. So this is known as gravitational redshift and this is actually a very important sort of a phenomena which is observed in our universe. However, I want to specify that all of these concepts are basically concepts coming from general theory of relativity. What here we have done is we have used a sort of an alternate viewpoint to come up with the same kind of a conclusion that when a photon is moving through a gravitational potential, it loses energy because a photon has a mass and the mass of the photon is not its rest mass, but rather the mass of the photon is because of its energy in the first place. And that results in a change in the frequency of the photon as it travels in a gravitational potential. So that is all 
for today's discussion. See you in the next one.